Hello once again, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another edition of AIW's The Card is Going to Change. Before we get into this week's episode, uh, of course, we want to give a thank you to our sponsors that help us bring the show to you for free on whichever podcast platform you choose to listen. Uh, naturally, we love our friends uh, at Smoke and Jay's Barbecue. If you are down in the Maslin area, uh, check out Smoke and Jay's. You can follow them on social media at Smokin underscore Jay's BBQ. Uh, delicious food. Amazing food. I have no idea if they're planning a tailgate for you fans uh, this coming week at Absolution. Uh, so check that out. Maybe follow them, find out, see if they are. But if you ever have any sort of catering needs, you have special events, they do it all at Smoke and Jays. And if you've got those people who, you know, they let you know that they're vegan, don't worry. Smoke and Jays can take care of them too. They've got some amazing vegan options as well. And of course, thanks to the merger between SmartMark Video and IWTV, watching AIW has never been easier. You can go to smartmarkvideo.com and purchase any. AIW show that's ever been produced on DVD or MP4. So if downloading is your deal, you can do that. Physical media, if that's your thing, we've got DVDs available there. And then, of course, sign up to IWTV. Use the code ABSOLUTE. It lets them know that we sent you there and that you found them through this podcast, through AIW, and you can watch not only rotating archive of AIW shows as well as uh, live events from AIW as they stream live, uh, you can also watch all sorts of other independent wrestling promotions and extra fun things on there, including interviews and different series that they have on IWTV for just $9.99 a month. And then our biggest sponsor this week, Absolution, is brought to you by Royal Docks Brewing Company's Backyard Crusher. Make sure you pick some up. Do you believe we'll have it available at the Tadmore Shrine this week? So you're going to want to try this out. They made this beer just, it's its for us. I mean, this is an AIW beer. So check that out. Support Royal Brox, do Royal Docks Brewing uh, out of Canton, Ohio. Uh, home of multiple AIW stars, of course. And uh, with that, we roll into this week's episode you are hearing my voice, Steve Guy, your moderator of Swords, for the very first time in, I don't know, a month or so. Uh, it's been a long and winding road. Not about me. This is Absolution Week. It's Absolution, baby. We are hard selling the show. It's going to be tremendous. There is so much to talk about. Uh, oddly enough, we're doing this hard sell, and AIW owner John Thorne has some things going on. We want to get a podcast out for you guys this week. Uh, we couldn't make it work with John Thorne. But joining me has uh, is a guy who has done a great job sitting in uh, in the moderator chair, Mr. Ronald Two Legs. Welcome. Uh, now you're like the the second chair. You're Thanks. Not the moderator yeah, it's chair, like a, I'm like a fucking utility player. Like, I was getting, I'll do whatever the hell you want. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whatever position, I'm here. Hey, Jose Ramirez started off as a utility player, and now he is a perennial all-star for see, your Cleveland see, Guardians. But so. you fucked That's two things. Deal. You spit out so much shit. I tried to do that. Like, I, you know, I hosted this thing a couple times, and I think my, like, beginning opening segment with all that was, like, a third of what you just... I think I covered it all, but I just was not as thorough as you are. Um, and two... <laughs> um, Oh shit! What was I gonna say? What was the other thing I was gonna say? Damn it! I had a good point to bring up. I don't know. Oh man! Oh well. Pressure's on. Was it about the um, beer? Did you try the beer? They brought it. It was warm, it's, uh, so I, it's got to be good because everyone was so enjoying it warm. So you got to know. You know what I mean? That okay. was. It had to be pretty good if everyone's just chugging it warm. So no, I. I but I didn't have any. Uh, you know, I try not to drink while I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah as this is exciting you know we'll we'll talk about it a little bit but uh you've got to be excited this is your first you've spent oh. many absolutions on one side of the guardrail as a fan this is your first absolution yeah as part of yes i'm real quick though i remember now what i was gonna say fucking okay. give me this shit about oh it's not about me you know how many times i got asked well, well where did, what are you doing here where's steve guy what happened to steve guy where is steve <laughs> they had a goddamn hashtag going in the pod tab of the discord which if you're not subscribed <laughs> get on the patreon get in the discord it's a good time, but 
dude, that you got what? I mean, I was like, I don't know. He's gone doing comedy or something. Leave me alone. They're like, where's Steve guy? Like a Rose is per he's, he's somewhere looking for you right now. He's here. A Rose. We found him. Steve is here. <laughs> they I were very here. worried about uh, you. You, you were know, missed. Maybe, maybe. Uh, well, I appreciate that. I appreciate everybody's uh, sentiments and missing me. And maybe at some point uh, I'll talk about it and get into it. But uh, not this week because yeah. this is absolution. Back to that. Yeah. So I mean, we got so I'm, much to yeah, talk I'm about. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, before we talk about. Uh, before we completely talk about Absolution, my first time back, uh, and this is your very first oh, shout-out yeah. segment happening right now, Ronald Two Legs, and you brought up A-Rose, so I'm just going to lead off because the man celebrated a birthday this week. Shout-out to A-Rose. Happy oh, yeah. birthday to Happy him. Happy birthday. Uh, shout-out to Derek Dillinger cutting uh, a sweet promo. Uh, shout-out to the Duke doing promos this week by his Jeep <laughs> Wrangler. Uh, <laughs> these guys are ready to go, man. Uh, I don't remember who else I want to shout out. There's, there's some well, shout out oh, to you, Ronald Tula, for holding this down, man. That's the big shout Hell out yeah. for me this week. Uh, doing it, been doing a, a great job. Thanks. Up job I just had time. the equipment. You uh, know I mean? <laughs> That's how I get a lot of jobs. Hey, can you do this? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, that's I get it. that's how I do a lot of stuff. You got any, you got any shout outs? This is your first shout out? So uh, anybody you want to shout I'll out? Shout, the Duke that promo. Yeah, I didn't get to see Derek's yet because I was working like all day. I haven't really perused the internet much, but I saw the Duke's one. That one was really good. Um, that was a good promo. Um, shout out. Um, yeah, shout out that beer company. I want to try some of that. They said they're going to have it for sale at Absolution. So maybe I'll try to I'll try yeah, to grab one of those. I'm shocked those old Chiners are gonna let that go. They're like, wait, we got kegs going. Are you gonna what is this scrap? I'm like, <laughs> they're gonna let that go or I you know, I don't know if they if they keg hmm. this beer. They might. So they might have oh, like the yeah, smaller kegs. Um so I don't have all that information for you folks listening. I know that uh, they they definitely have cans because we had them uh, at the Winchester. Uh, I don't know if we'll, we'll have kegs or not, but it will be available at Absolution 15 this Saturday at the Tadmore Shrine. Uh, and, you know, I did not check with John Thorne, but I have to imagine that we will be streaming this this weekend, uh, but just based upon how we figured out the streaming for the last show. Uh, but should that not be the case, get your tickets, folks. There are still tickets available, general admission, shop.airrestling.com, but they are going quickly. They are going to run out. Got a special meet and greet with Johnny Gargano. Shout out to Johnny Gargano. Uh, His first absolution in, wow, six years? Yeah. Yeah. 2016. His, I believe was his last absolution and you know who took part in that absolution match who was it steve guy this guy right here i was not against him but it was we did a whole game show thing it was johnny and candace taking on ec3 and okay. carly perez and uh we did like nxt challenges Ooh, okay. and stuff and i essentially was a game show host and then i got involved Uh-oh. and uh I, I basically was an EC3 lackey, and I, you know. How dare you, Steve? Uh, How dare you? Tried to, tried to save him. Johnny gave me drop toe hold. I went head first into uh, the no regions. wasn't good. Man. Yeah. Um, good. My shout out, another shout out. Uh, I haven't got to shout him out on the pod or say much about him, but I didn't know the guy too well. But I, big shout out to Biggins, man. I wish I, that's one of the biggest things being backstage and on stuff. I really wish that dude was around because I got to interact with him a little bit before, you know, because I haven't been around too long. But man, I really think I would have got along with that guy. I think his humor and shit, man, I would have just sat at that board and just laughed and laughed and laughed, man. I just, I, I really wish I could have experienced the backstage with Biggins personally. Well, now his, his, um, place of staying he was, was always at the backstage. door Biggins yeah always but i feel like i would be able to hear him because uh, i remember being able to hear him in the stands i feel like i'd probably be able to hear him behind the stage and i would know that it's him screaming oh, yeah, that from great. the door it would just well and he would he would walk around before the shows and just him busting balls with all the boys it doesn't matter where you are on the card if you are mm-hmm. a lower tier guy or gal or you are a uh, top tier somebody coming in biggins was going to give you a hard time about something 
<laughs> he did not care. I feel like I would have got along with him well, man. I mean, I did for a little bit, you know. I did, I, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend like we were. But you know, he probably didn't even really know who I was. But we interacted a little bit. But I think he interacted with everybody. That's the kind of guy he was. He was just nice. I can tell you that he probably would have listened to Pod Van Dam because he just listens to everything. Uh, that was that's that's who he was, man. Every wrestling podcast he consumes just so he knows everything about everybody and oh, could you imagine uh, biggin on the everything. biggins on the voicemail calling into the voicemail <laughs> <laughs> that'd have been some good that'd been some good voicemails i bet if he would have listened i would venture to uh guess that uh, he would be ripping apart ed on multiple occasions uh on the voicemail no doubt nice about it sure. <laughs> he would yeah he uh man yeah. still miss that guy uh, his, his birthday, birthday coming up, I believe here in the end of the month. Yeah. Um, might be, I think his birthday's the 30th. So the day we'll be out in Ashtabula, okay. uh, but absolution, definitely a, a huge, you know, we do this for yep. biggins kind of thing. Uh, it's a big deal, huge deal. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be cool. That was, you know, Johnny's last absolution was also, was uh biggins last absolution oh yeah yeah it's just like i said about. just want to mention him it was, uh, he's been on my mind a lot of people have been posting yeah. about him and like i said i really feel like him and i would have got along he's he was he was uh man what a character what a freaking character i mean we covered it so much on here and it's if you're new to AIW, go back and listen to podcasts that we had with Biggins. Uh, some of the funnest times just recording stuff with was with John and Biggins, and we just suit you know we do it in person then, and we just kind of sit in a circle and go off. And I mean, getting Biggins riled up was a favorite Thorn pastime. He knew which buttons to push. Oh yeah. And when they pushed him, especially it was too, and, and you could t- it came through on the pod because that was when I first started like coming to AIW and listening, and you could get so much from those. They would just have name association pods, and that was like a big thing of when I filled in for you a couple times and just like doing this podcast and stuff. For me, it was like kind of like nerve wracking because I'm like, man, I've listened to this show before, and there's been some incredible, you know, some great wrestling banter on this show before the card is going to change has had some great stuff told especially when they would just tell stories of guys and just stuff like that so i was like man i really get you know you gotta really you know people are gonna tune into this shit you gotta kind of try and uphold some sort of uh you know level of you know <laughs> whatever here but yeah biggins uh he was a great there's storyteller there's a lot there's a lot uh you know that's a perfect way i'm not even gonna go continue any more shout outs that's a great way to wrap up the shout out segment right there uh no greater shout out than chandler biggins on absolution week so let's get into absolution itself there are oh, so many matches that have been announced and uh, folks if you've ever been into an aiw show if you've ever been to an absolution i'm not saying it's gonna happen but will there be matches that haven't been announced eh. Eh. <laughs> just leave it at that you know so we get, again get there shop.aiwrestling.com uh there are obviously the big main event we have Derek dillinger joshua bishop uh presumably for the absolute and intense titles but i don't know if you saw this on twitter uh matt cardona claiming he's not he's not <laughs> relinquishing oh, really? the title so I mean, I, didn't, I only have I Facebook. Don't I don't have Twitter, but, but I don't know if he put that on the book yet. But yeah. he's just not, he's not doing yeah, it, huh? Uh, he, I'm sure he didn't. <laughs> uh, that's what he claims. But, you know, Thorne's yeah. the boss. So if Thorne, Thorne and, and Wandsworth say, no, pal, you're not the champion, then, I mean. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm excited to see what he's, why he's, you know, like what he's going to cite as why he's not giving. Like, you know, he's going to have something he's going to say. So I'm excited to hear it. I mean, the guy works his butt off. Maybe he thinks he's going to be back like in a Mr. month. Mr. Cardone I don't is know. a smart guy. I uh, bet you he's got some sort of plan. I would be surprised if he brings that fucking, what's his name? The silver head, the silver dick lawyer. What's his name? Yeah, yeah, oh, smart Mark. Mark. I wouldn't be surprised if he brings that stooge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's lead off with, um, you know, speaking of promos, I don't know if you, you saw this, but Tim Donst also put out a promo, I believe, or okay. it is coming out. We have seen it. Uh, he has answered the challenge to Kaplan. And, I mean, Kaplan trying to make him a name for himself, taking on legends. Uh, 
arguably one of the greatest legends in absolution history is Tim freaking Donst. And Kaplan called him out, and here we go. I I mean, chaos is a word that I would say in anticipation it's of It's going to be a war. And that was like the best word I think I could. It's going to be a fucking war. Chaos for sure, but it's going to be those two absolute behemoths are just going to beat the shit out of each other. And I can't wait. I cannot wait. Yeah, Kaplan no. has no fear, you know. So I mean, he's taking on PCO. Uh, I mean, the best of the best. I'm taking on Tom Lawler. You know, going toe to toe with him. He does not care. So this is going to be crazy. It's going to really feel like absolution getting Tim Donst back in the fold. We haven't seen Donst at AIW since uh, what our Ashtabula show, I think. Last year, when we when we did the show out in Ashtabula, and he did sustain an injury there, I know that, and that shelved him for a while. Of course, that's the same show, ironically, where Kaplan got <laughs> ran over a truck by a truck. Uh, <laughs> you think he was, he didn't so, see that happen? Like that, like Donstad slipped his. He didn't see the man who called him out get hit by a fucking U-Haul truck. <laughs> and still keep going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's like, all right, let's do this. Uh, I mean, yeah, a war. War is. I, is I great. showed that to this lady uh, I work with the one time at the pizza shop because she's like, I always tell like rest, like it's it's she, like it's real, like they beat the shit out of each other and stuff. I was like, it's fucking crazy, and I showed her the U-Haul and she's like, like did like she's like, was that like a camera trick? Like, how, he didn't really get hit by the truck, did he? <laughs> she's like, it looked so real, and I'm like, no. Yeah, like he he hit him with the U-Haul, and she's like, "Are, are you? Is are they crazy?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it, it, they are. It's worth the yeah, price." Yeah, they are crazy, mission. especially especially them. So, it, listen, if Kaplan is willing to uh, sustain getting ran over by a U-Haul truck, uh, who knows what Every- he's got in store for Tim Donce? But Tim Donce has had amazing absolution battles, including um, against Nick Gage. He is worse, Johnny Gargano. Speaking of him. Uh, so, if, who just knows, seems man? Like every War. every okay. match that I've seen Kaplan do, when he comes back through that curtain, he is no joke. Like the sh- he is fucked up. Like he is like beat to shit. Like oh, he yeah. puts it all out there. So I can't wait because Timmy does the same. Man, I've never seen a bad Tim Donce match in AIW. So I'm very excited. Yeah, I mean, uh, speaking of iconic uh, absolutions, you know. The- Freaking ladder match between Tim Donce and Joe yeah, Janela. That was what I commented on the uh, Facebook page. Uh, they, you know, AIW posted. Give, me, give us your favorite uh, Absolution moments, and that that was mine. Janela and Donce ladder match. Unbelievable. So, oof, you, I mean, looking forward to this one. I don't know where it falls in terms of you know, folks. As we talk about the show, I we're not going in order of where the matches are set. I don't know where this is going to fall. But if we if we kicked off with this match, I, I mean, what a hot way to start the show if that were to be the case wherever wherever this falls on the card this is uh i mean it seems weird to call it the the sleeper for a show stealing match but the card is very be. stacked so it's you know it's hard to say you know yeah uh and then as we continue on the list of call outs uh, wondering what people are thinking. Ooh. Big Twan Tucker calling out Matt Justice when we were at Winchester. Presumably Justice has answered this call, and he's going to show up. you got to imagine Fonzie will probably be there as well. Uh, yeah, he had to have Twan? taken some shots to the head in that match because he said he called Matthew Justice a bitch. He said, if you ain't a bitch. Like, well, I guess he didn't call him a bitch. He basically challenged... Justice to say to to prove to him he's not, which is almost even worse. You might be better off just calling him a bitch than yeah. saying, "Are you?" Because Justice is now going to go above and beyond what he, you know. So, yeah, I mean, this this is like Chuan has to remember when he was at Wrestle Rager a few years ago, and he was involved in just that chaotic main event, and he's got Thorn stabbing him with a fork. Like Tuan, this is this is what you're. <laughs> Your night could oh, that's, be. That's a walk that in the park for Matthew Justice. Getting stabbed in the head with a fork that's is nothing. just that's a Thursday night for you know the thrash man. Yeah, but I mean, Justice will have his hands full because Twan's Twan like, is boy, no man. joke. You're not you're not taking and, that guy. You off know, the like Thorne and I kind of discussed uh, some shows previous. 
you know, Tuan at one point in AIW was this unstoppable force. I mean, that guy was red hot for a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so yeah, it's in him. Tuan's got it. He's got the fire, and he's got that. He's got that second. I shouldn't say second gear, especially against Matthew Justice, but he's got another level that he can bring it to as well. <laughs> um, so this could be a big match. And like I said, you know, you you have another, you have a great match against Matthew Justice, like the in Absolution. You could be right back on the path of where Tuan was before COVID and all that. He, you know, so he could be right back on the path with a great match here. Yeah, I mean, Tuan has that match against uh, Ethan Page at uh, Winchester. Mm-hmm. Pre COVID, yeah. I want to say, um, leading all well, leading up to I think his match with uh, MJF. Who could forget that? Twan Tucker, you know, putting MJF down in MJF's last match uh, before leaving the Independence. That was, of course, also at Absolution. You talk about more Absolution moments, and that was man already three years ago. Can we? We haven't talked about that. Here's the thing, folks. Get your freaking tickets because, again, shop.aiwrestling.com. Uh, the Tadmore Shrine is huge. We are running out, but uh, I'm sure because we have so much space there, maybe we'll find ways to add more if we need to. But we have not had an absolution in three yeah. years. Can you believe that? It's not since 2019. We're going, we're gonna be, it's going to be, what, Hell on Earth 18 now or 19? Because Hell on Earth was always one ahead, right, from the count? Uh, so this will be Hell on Earth uh, 16? sixteen this year oh. in November. Yeah, this yeah, is but I thought 15. because we missed three years, we did Hell on Earth. I think we're a number, a few numbers. Ahead. We only oh. did Hell on Earth once. Okay, I say I think we're yeah. yeah. So yeah, but three years, you, we could be at Absolution eighteen by now. If there would have been none, you know no pandemic and all that stuff. So yeah, you know Absolution could be barely <laughs> legal right now, Steve. but it's not. <laughs> What's this after phrase? 10 p.m. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> after 10 p.m. Uh, so, Tuan, Tuan, Matthew Justice. Oh, it's going to be wild. It's going to be crazy. And, you know, as we talk about behemoths and big men uh, and people doing questionable things, Pretty Boy Smooth, Isaiah Broner, oof, you would. You, a big a couple big dudes who are just going to be trading punches and it stiff seems shots. that PB feels some way about Isaiah and how the thing shook down with Forty Acres and Jocelyn and all that, and um, he he wanted Isaiah Broner's attention and fuck fucking hell did he get it and that is the man that he he sure did you know. Uh, PB is he's got some things to prove here too. I think PB had a lot of momentum um, and ha- you know. It was in a spot. He was, you know, he was your absolute champion at one point, Um, you know, and Isaiah Broner has been, you know, just a fucking machine. He is. The problem has been just fucking murdering people lately. So, you know, PB comes in and, you know, I'm sure it's not going to be no walk in the park. But if he were able to beat Isaiah Broner, that puts, you know, that puts PB in another stratosphere as well, because, you know, Broner's been coming through here and just, you know, lights out. Dude is just absolutely murdering people. Yeah, I think, I mean, you're, you're right. You hit the nail on the head there. PB, it's like Isaiah Broner is currently in the position that PB used to be in. And and I, th- I think back to, oddly enough, more absolution, but PB and uh, Frankie Flynn, uh, bygone names, you know, they had a feud when the production was <laughs> first getting started. And, you know, there was this, this whole kind of feeling and sentiment from Frankie because he was shelled with an injury and then PB comes through and and Frankie's whole thing was, oh, well, PB kind of stole his spot. And there's a little bit of that now, again, making movies, right? It all comes full circle. Here's PB in the situation because here comes Isaiah Broner, big dude, just <laughs> destroying everybody, much the same way that PB used to. And I mean, still does, obviously, but it's like that what's new, I you know, Br- Broner's like, like the new thing, you know what I mean? And PB feels some way about that, I think. Yeah. I think, it's, yeah, I think that PB feels like he's kind of taking a back seat to Isaiah Broner right now. And But what a cowardly thing to just knock out Jocelyn. Like I said, uh, you know, he, he, he clearly wanted Broner's attention and that, and I think he was looking for a can't miss way and, you know, that's fucked up though that's my homie Josh that's that's fucked up PB I'm not gonna lie dude 
Yeah, I don't. I don't ever want Isaiah Broner's attention yeah, in that no, way. Like, not good. <laughs> I get along with the guy. I'm gonna stay on that good side. I I've yeah. seen what he does to people. Yeah, I don't want any part of that, Steve. <laughs> no, I stay. Uh, no, I stay I far away from that, that ring. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so these two behemoths are just going to oh, destroy each other. And I mean, I'm just thinking these three patches that we've already gone through, right? Again, I don't know the order of what it's going to be with the show. But if you went Kaplan and Don, <sighs> oh Justice God. and Twan, PB and Isaiah Broner, I don't know. Like, I'm still wondering what's the ring going to be like? After I mean, those are just, I mean, that's just three back to back to back to back to just, those are, those are absolution matches. I'm, I'm excited, man. I know Saturday can't get here quick enough. I'm excited. Yeah. It's, it's going to be amazing. Uh, and you know, as is a, an absolution tradition, you can't have an absolution without a four way tag match. There have been some unbelievable, four-way tag matches in the history of Absolution, and I think that this one is going to be right up there. We saw at the uh, Winchester a couple weeks ago, to an infinity beyond, pull off a win over the Bitcoin boys and members only, uh, and then have some, uh, well, Colin, I should say. Cheech didn't have anything <laughs> nice to say, but Colin said some nice things. Say, hey, we're going to run this back, and Cheech says, we're going to run this back, but you know, you're going to pay some respect to the old guard too. And we got the Jollyville fuck it's on board as well. So you got the Bitcoin boys to infinity beyond members only and the Jollyville fuck it's. If ever one of these two younger tag teams was going to solidify themselves as a team of the future. What a yeah. showcase right here. Yeah. Cause I mean that three way at the Winchester was what a match. That was a banger of a match. And then now you add the fuck it's who are just an AIW you know, staple. Um, you talk about AIW legends that have yeah. been around. Um, you know, that's <laughs> those guys are top of the game. So I don't know why Colin would uh, would want to add that punishment to himself and make it that much harder. But that's the gamesman <laughs> you get out of Colin Delaney. Um, he knows that the the fuckets are also going to inflict that punishment upon the other two teams as well. So it's kind of you know it's a little bit of a, a, a brain thing there for Colin. But I love I love the Colin and Cheech good cop bad cop. Uh, they're the best man. You you gotta love two infinity. Yeah, <laughs> I love those guys. Cheech, yeah, Cheech hates Cheech everybody except it's for fine. me. Cheech loves me. <laughs> that's my buddy. <laughs> yeah. I think he likes me too. It's uh, but uh, in terms of people in the ring, yeah. he just hates them all. Uh, no respect for members only <laughs> like or the Bitcoin boys, many, yeah. uh, which that's fine. No, I, you know, I guess I get it. You gotta On some respect levels, you members get it, right? only. Those uh, are my guys. Plaque excellence, baby. PVD award winning fucking tag team, baby. Those are my guys. Yeah, but you can't. Res- you don't have. You I, don't respect the Bitcoin boys, man. They've. I was been getting there. For a while I here. wasn't done yet. I was going to say the Bitcoin boys oh, as man. well with the Duke. I mean, the Duke. That guy's not putting his money into you know a lame duck. He's not backing you know a loser. That guy's smart. Duke is fucking smart. Uh, those two tag teams, and that's what yeah. you like. A great, great point on you. If either of those two tag teams are come out the victor, I mean, you're talking about both of them. Bitcoin boys, especially, been around a little bit longer than members only. But I mean, for either one of those two teams to take the victory on that one, you're t- yeah, you're talking about solidifying yourself in which an already incredibly loaded tag team division. AIW has the most tag team stacked tag team division I can think of anywhere on the Indies. So. Oh, absolutely! It's it's so hard to break through in this division. So this is I mean, this is that stand. match. If, if you are going to have an elevated yeah. status, this is a statement match for those younger teams. You know, for in, for Colin and Cheech, and uh, for for Russ and T Money, um, it is a statement match. But I think for them, it's a different kind of statement match. In that, mm-hmm. hey, we're still here, and this is still our division. We're still here to stay. Uh, so. All of these teams, while there's no title here, the implications of what winning this matchup uh, could mean are, oh, yeah. to me, they're pretty high. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, imagine who you want to oh, see geez. get pounced. Who do I want to see get pounced? <laughs> um, yeah. Probably, uh, Eric probably, <laughs> probably Eric Taylor. <laughs> I don't know why. I just think you know Eric. It's yeah, it'll probably be Eric. 
Um, that future too bright is going to be awfully bright when he's seeing, you know, he's laying there staring up at the lights after he's taking smack a pound, the shit so out of me. When he sees me now for that. <laughs> um, I'm just jealous that hot tub he's always hanging out in. That's why, really. Dude, though, think about it, though. Like, just think about that. And, like, talking about that match it, it, to bring the Double Dare tournament back again, man, we got to run that back here one of these coming up years because the t- the tag division right now is so hot that a Double Dare tournament, whew, whew, I'd be you're talking about two days of fun right there. Yeah, you know what's crazy is we used to bring in teams for the Double Dare oh, to now f- fill that out. But now it's just yep. it would be the division because there are so many teams and you know this doesn't even include when you talk about the division and it continues to grow obviously you have nine to five but you have teams that we've been bringing in uh like money shot bang uh, bros. you've got um the bang bros what uh, oh, fuck so what a, um the von england's have a new name fuck what is it the heritage yeah the heritage. you got them you got um yeah Original Sins have came in a few times. Those guys are fucking wild. You could have brought them yeah. in. I mean, there's a handful of teams that we've seen come through that are some young, up-and-coming tag teams that are fucking wild. Money Shot, yeah, those dudes are fucking wild. Oh, yeah. Beasts, right? They, well, those, I mean, talk about big guys again, like the, the powerhouses right there, man. We're going to have to bring that up to uh, Thorn, do a so, double dare again. <laughs> yeah. Bring the double dare back? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, you know, the one thing you brought up is, uh, is the Duke batting, backing the Bitcoin boys. N- I'm not sure that we're going to see the Duke in no, this match. No, he's got to save himself. Yeah. We talked about his promo, Duke and Wes Barkley, and this has gotten heated. Uh, you know, Wes feels like Duke just keeps putting his nose where it doesn't belong, which surprise, surprise there. Uh, and it, man, he wants, he wants to take this guy out. I, I don't know. I don't know that I've seen Wes Barkley as fired up as I saw him at the end of yeah. that Winchester show, mm-hmm. AIW 3D. Um, he, Wes, you could tell, has is, is had enough of the Duke. And I also think that Wes knows the importance of the Duke, especially in this scenario, in that the Duke said it himself. He, what hasn't that guy done in absolution? I mean, that guy has been around. Duke, Duke is the list of his accomplishments in absolution alone, let alone AIW, is extremely long. So you got a guy like Wes who has a very big fo- following, a very big you know crowd behind him. If you can take that and and have a great match and 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 put away the Duke and clean up your problems with him, all in all in the same time of an absolution. I mean that's that's an opponent. You know what I mean? I, I, that that could be a very big very big uh, step in West West Barkley's singles because I know you know they do the Rip City Shooter thing, but. Wes predominantly is a singles wrestler yeah. for the most part. Um, so him sure. him beating basically one of the top absolution guys in the company in the history of that show would be a big notch if it was me. Do you know uh, Ethan Page's favorite a- yeah, absolution the match Duke. ever? Uh, no, oh, the, yeah, it's Jock. Jock. The dog collar match? Yeah. Yep. Dog collar match, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, we bring up Wes Barkley and, you know, what the Duke, what has any accomplished at Absolution. But a great point here, even as we ran through all of these matches, the fact that we haven't had Absolution in three years, can you believe this is this is Wes Barkley's very first yeah. Absolution match? Yeah, it's wild to think. Three years, man. It's, it's so mean, fucking so, long. It doesn't feel like as long as it did just because, just, I don't know, I guess because we lived it and whatever, but man. Haven't been an absolution in three years. Yeah, and where he's come from three years ago to now, I mean, well deserved for him to have a a showcasing match on this. Wes has worked his his ass off. You know, he doesn't um, he doesn't deserve to just be out there with Josh. Uh, you know. Mm-hmm. kind of backing him up he deserves to have his own showcase equally i mean as well here so this is this is great to see him have this opportunity his very first absolution matchup uh other first timers isaiah broner this will be his first absolution uh this is kaplan's first absolution singles yeah. match uh members only very first absolution i believe bitcoin boys first absolution I could be wrong, but I think that's I, I think that that's three accurate. Three years ago, when they would have been, um, but you, yeah, if they did, they may have been just tossed in on a scramble or something. Um, so, 
I mean, just wild to think about the names on this card as we look at it now, and we're like, oh, these are main players at AIW, and they yeah. haven't been in an absolution because of everything that we've been through. So, like, again, folks, everybody that's on this card has something to prove. Like, you're not going to want to miss this show. You've seen all of these uh, people at this point over the last year just continue to, to build themselves up and make names for themselves. And this is their time to shine. Everybody wants to steal the show at Absolution, including the Duke and Wes Barkley. Those are two guys who always want to steal the show. You throw them in an Absolution. I mean, I'm looking forward to this. I have no idea how this is going to go. We're either going to get the... Uh, we're going to get a driver of some sort, I imagine. Duke driver? Maserati? <laughs> I don't know. Can 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 West pull off the Maserati? What's driver? what's the I'm prop doing. bet on that? Like you know, who hits it first? Or how many are hit? You know, <laughs> um, yeah, that's a, that's a good. We should start coming up with some absolution prop bet freaking sheets, man. Some yeah. prop bets for absolution? Yeah, we could do. Somebody's got to yeah, come absolutely. up with the tailgate. We need a uh, new person to lead the tailgate since Jeff Cal isn't going to be there. R.I.P. to my guy Jeff. It's going to be weird as fuck without Jeff there. Yeah. Um. But yeah, we you know. It's uh, who's going to be the tailgate and who who's going to give the first or take the first Duke driver or Maserati driver? It's bet number one. Also, who's going to take who is going to take Ooh, the first yes, pass? That's another one that'll be on there. That's good. It's just good. Throw that prop bet on there. Uh, speaking of first absolutions, as we continue down the list. Uh, this this amazing rivalry has grown so bitter between Jocelyn Navarro and Katie Arquette, and this is both of their first absolutions. So neither one of them have ever competed at an absolution at this point. And when you and that's you know again you look at this now, and Jocelyn has very much become the heart of an AIW women's division, and here she is, her very first one. We're going two out of three falls on this thing. Uh, between Katie Arquette and Jocelyn Navarro. So it's got to get settled. They've just been going back and forth, beating the hell out of each other. I think the two out of three was the only way, really, that we could do it because the feud has been, I mean, it's been such a wild feud and it's been back and forth. The matches have been so great that it would almost be unfair to let it just go to one this time because it would almost still feel kind of unfinished because they've been back, you know, they've each won one and it's been such, they've been Mm -hmm. such great matches and so very equal. That to only do one more would almost feel like a cheat. Like, okay, man, they just like snuck one. You do that best two out of three. We're yeah. re- we are really finding out, you know, who's on top, you know, in this feud. Um, yeah, and this is, you know, we used the word war earlier. Two out of three falls could very much just be a war of attrition. It just becomes who survives. I mean, it's possible that one of them sneaks and takes both falls right away. I just, but, I don't see it. I don't I mean, see it happening just, based it just, on the don't. how you know how even those matches have been, and it was just so back and forth. Um, I think we're going to see a really great two out of three here in this match. Yeah, this this again, just like everything else I've said, you know, everybody out to prove something to steal a show, and for these ladies on their very first absolution to have such a a monumental match like this, you got to believe that they're going to be out there, both of them trying to prove that they are, you know. They're top of the food chain. You got to think, um, especially for both of them. Josh, she's came from you know came from training, you know training with Mega and the other company, and coming over to AIW. And I think she take took such big strides in coming from where she started to where she is now, and how good she is now. Um, for her to win and really solidify this and say, hey, like I'm I'm the top I'm the top of the women's division here. Um, but then also for Katie too, um, if she wins this, to say you know because. She's not a absolute mainstay here in AIW, but she gets in and you know she she has her appearances, and I think she kind of to would if she could win this one, she could say like that would be like her statement, like I do, I belong here in AIW. This is Absolution. I've, I'm winning this two out of three falls, you know, feud, and and I belong here in this division, and you know, and I'm gonna stick around. So I think there's a, there's just there's so much for either ladies on the line in this one. Um, oh yeah, so much to prove on on both sides of this. Uh, it's going to be incredible. Really looking forward to this one. Uh, and in terms of people, things to prove, and again, first-timer at Absolution. Uh, Domna Garini, not a first-timer. No stranger to Absolution. I knew who you were talking about. <laughs> he will be involved in a dog co- dog collar match. And oh. Casey Carrington the fourth. not only is this his very first Absolution, this is his first dog collar match. Uh, he has been running away from Dominic Garini for 
uh, man, it seems like a, almost a year. I mean, this went, this I think this whole thing started way back at uh, Hell on Earth, realistically. Let's, uh, yes, Hell on Earth was where they did it. But let's just say Casey Carrington has done some strategic, st- <laughs> to steal a little line from all George W. there, he, Casey Carrington has done some great strategery in uh, evading the bone collector and getting help when he needed it. Um, against the bone collector. Um, I think all of that is going to go away because of the dog collar. And I think when, when Dom told him that and pulled that dog collar out from under the ring and at 3d, the, the he look on out. his face when he sees that, yeah. And just, I think it all came, came to the surface of what he's done. And, and like I said, how he's been able to evade Dom and get away and kind of do what he needed to do, he's not going to be able to do any of that. They are going to be chained to each other. And and it's going to – I think Casey – Casey's going to have to bring his A game. I've seen him wrestle. He's a great wrestler. The kid knows moves. Uh, he, you know, he he's a dangerous guy in the ring. Um, but the Italian-American dragon, you might have fucking pissed off the wrong guy, Casey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean – Adam has had some incredible matches throughout the history of AIW, and uh, he's had an incredible Absolution run as well. You Dom versus the Duke yeah. at Absolution. Uh, Dom versus Tom Lawler right. at Absolution. Uh, so Dom brings his A game at Absolution. Dom always brings his A game, but Absolution, you get a different yeah. Dominic Greeny. <laughs> And I, I don't think Casey Carrington really knows that, and he's about to find out. So I don't know if he's got Carson and Jackson Stone coming out with him. He in his might want to like, but uh, he old might want to employ another one or two guys. On that. I'm not to say that uh, Jackson Stone, you know, any slouch or anything, but uh, man, he might need to get another guy because Carson might over. He might Carson might not even be around. Dude might be at the broadcast booth. You know what I mean? He might be over there doing commentary. So who knows? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you got, always got to keep your eye on uh, old Brian Carson when it comes to this stuff that with Casey Carrington. I mean, Casey calls himself the new bone collector. That was a mistake. Uh, <laughs> prove it. That prove was it this a Saturday. Coming pal. up with that nickname, that shirt. Oh boy, all that was a bad idea, Casey. <laughs> he's, you know, he's a bit of a pretty but, boy. Uh, you said it, he's a good wrestler, but uh, if he doesn't have to get in there and mix it up too but hard, but you know he's what, though, too, to, man, but, you know, he that's the thing, though. Casey Carrington, the fourth, is a very good wrestler. He proved a lot of things, I think, and go for mm-hmm. broke. And a lot of these shows leading up to this, and even in some in, in the matches with Dom, you know, he, he, I don't, I hate to say this because Dom's my guy, you know, it's well documented, me and Dom, you know, homies, but. You got to You got at least respect Casey. Got himself here, and you you got to you know Dom's no idiot. You you can't just look past anyone. You can't look past anyone. So Casey knows yeah. how to wrestle, and he knows what he's doing. And it, they're like I said, they got a fucking dog collar. Casey's allowed to use the dog collar too. Let's not forget that. Let's not forget yeah, that. That's true. You're he's right. He's allowed you're to right. use it too. Yep. So he there's is, that. He is, and um, he's you know running around with Carson. Uh, who's always kind of been a little bit of a sneaky son of a bitch. Uh, Casey has clearly yeah. picked up a few things. So, I mean, it's advantage Dom, but don't sleep. Yeah, I mean, Casey that's, Carrington. like I said, you just you can't look past anyone. So, it, especially like with the dog collar. He's allowed to use, you know what I mean? That, that, you choke the shit out of it's you. It's a wild like, card, yeah. You know? Yeah, the dog collar itself is a huge X factor. Uh, in this matchup, it's meant to be there to, you know, not uh, have one person get away from the other. There is no running, but to your point, you can use yeah. it. It's part of the match. It, 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 it will come. We see it time and time again, these matches. It comes into play. Uh, so who uses it first? There There's you go. Prop yep, exactly. Perfect. <laughs> we got some whoever's listening at home. Somebody print this out. <laughs> get this going. Uh. All right, let's go into you know. I mean, I, I guess I kind of consider this a, a, a main double main event. I mean, really, this is a triple I mean, main event. Dog yeah. collar match. I don't even know what's every every match on this can feel like it's a main event to be honest. But especially with uh, a three year layoff of Absolution, you're talking about Absolution. Every match could be a great main event in any other card, and then a three year layoff. That fucking anticipation and that it's all just gonna you know it's all been boiling. 
Yeah, it's all coming together. I mean, I got to believe that the crowd is going to be so pumped too because it's absolution, baby. This is totally, totally different. Every show has a great feel and energy about it, but uh, this one is special for a reason. And talking about absolution moments, uh, well, tag team titles on the line. PME certainly made a name for themselves at absolution. Who could ever forget? Uh, And then... I mean, that was three years ago, right? Or was Shout it four years ago? Three years cannons. ago. 2019, <laughs> the confetti cannons, uh, PME, everybody was in love with them at the time. They have since aligned themselves with Matt Cardona and pissed everybody off. And so now here they go. Their number one contenders are bulking season. Arthur MacArthur and Chuck Stone. Uh, We saw these teams split up and go against each other in singles competition at AIW 3D, uh, splitting those matches, by the way, in terms of wins. So each team got a victory there. But this is... This is boiled over. Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of incidents in this one leading up to it. Um, I mean, I mentioned it before 3D with you know, that photo of, of Philadelphia Collins choking out Artie, you know, and he was like bleeding out and just yeah. like unconscious. Um, yeah. I mean, the, we saw what they could do in the singles. Um, and I, I'm, I'm real excited for the tag match. Uh, yeah. PME was everybody's favorite, you know, little kids loved them. Now they're the bad men from long Island. You hate to see it. <laughs> yeah. And balking season, you know, you talk about people who have built momentum, over the last uh, couple of years, is we have not had an absolution. And this is their first oh, absolution. Wow, Again, that, yeah. What a way to debut at absolution for them. They're in a tag yeah. title matchup and very well deserved. They, I mean, Again, stacked tag team division, but these are guys who have risen to the top of that tag team division. Uh, you know, a little bit quietly, I think, at moments, but more recently, a lot of noise. They have built so much momentum. People are behind them. And here they go. You know, this is a team that started off, dare I say, kind of as a joke, right? It, you know, we everybody they were very laughable. They were the fun. We kind of laughed yes. at them a little bit. They kind of th- thrown them. together and, type tag team. Yeah, but they they found a chemistry yeah. and they found a, you know, uh, a connection with each other that you really, yeah, you're really seeing come through in the matches because – yeah, they've they've kind of quietly and kind of like just steadily kind of trotted along and handled their business in the tag in the tag division and uh, yeah, not for, first match in Absolution tag title match. Yeah, you can't hate that. And there's such a unique tag team too in that you know you look at a lot of these teams. Okay, uh, boys from Jollyville, right? You have T Money and then you have Russ. T Money, obviously the powerhouse. Uh, PME Philly, obviously the powerhouse. Uh, but you look at balking season. These are two powerhouses. Arthur's the yeah. strongest man in all the land, and Chuck Stone I mean, is a burger loving badass dude. And the guy that killed Bin Laden. Let's fucking go, dude. I mean, what the hell? Let's go. Um, Let's go. That's Here yeah. That's are, a great man. point. They can kind of switch roles, and either one of them can be that bigger guy. Like if you know, if they're in the ring, and you know, team money. If they say they were, you know, in, in a in a match with like a four way or something. You know, and Team Money tags in. You, you don't. Neither one of them has to. You know, Chuck doesn't have to look to the corner to tag to Artie, or Artie doesn't have to look to the corner to check. That either one of them, you know, they have size, but then they're also not huge as huge as they both got some some quickness to them too. Yeah, it's like um, very all all around that tag. You, they can kind of. Oh, Ch- Chuck Stone is oh, yeah. deceivingly. Oh yeah. Quick and and agile, especially like, when burgers are involved. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when burgers are involved. Yeah. So this is going to be, like we said, there is bad blood here. Uh, absolutely. And uh, this is it's all going to boil over on Saturday. You know, more people know where to run. It feels like PME continuously does these hit jobs on the balking season, boys. And not happening uh, this Saturday at Absolution. It, it all comes down to this for the tag titles. Will PME continue their reign and terrorizing the tag team division, pissing everybody off, or will balking season, you know, will they come out on top and have a, a feel-good moment, feel-good story here? These guys kind of coming out of uh, nowhere to be atop the and tag team division. it's just like another match, too, where you're just like, 
here we go. Like, it's not just, eh, just eh, throw it together. Like, this has been building. I feel like every match, like you said, could be the headlining match because there's so much behind every single match. You know, um, yeah. this card, it's going to be in- incredible to see how it plays out and which ma- what match, like you said, what match goes where, what starts us off, you know, and, and in that in that sense. Because every single match, you're like, okay, there's, you know, there's some some juice in this. You know, we know, you know, there's some some shit behind this. And, uh, yeah, I can't. Yeah. Well, and speaking of implications and some juice behind a match, we go to what presumably will be the main event for the absolute and intense titles. I said, even though Matt Cardona claims he's not (laughs) going to relinquish them, but whatever that means, I don't think it's his call to say. He's going to tell us it is. I bet he's going to tell us why he thinks. Uh, Yeah. Right. Uh, but we've got Derek Dillinger, and Joshua Bishop. Joshua Bishop has been an absolute champion and an intense champion. Derek has never held gold uh, at AIW. Technically, I suppose he was part of the, the production as tag team champions, and it was kind of yeah. interchangeable. But, but it's just, um, but he himself definitely no no singles titles, which is crazy. And Derek's yet to win the he's yet to win the big one though either. As we look at this, you know, we had the Biggins Cup uh, last year. Wes Barkley, half the Rip City Shooters, yeah. comes out with that win. Uh, Gauntlet for the gold finishes yeah. second. Cybernetico, right, right, right we, in we there. Did that final not no, not even knowing at the time that yeah, we final two, right, final yeah. two. Derek yep. and, and Dom, and then you know not and not knowing at the time that that would have led to him having a title shot at that moment against Matt Cardona. So as much noise as Derek Dillinger has made, and he'll tell you all about it. You watch his promos. You know he's the he's not wrong. That's just gonna say it's crazy right. to think that he hasn't because he's not wrong. The points he's made, he's not wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, his his latest promo, I know you haven't watched it yet, but he basically calls out Josh Bishop and blames him for Matt Cardona taking <laughs> taking over. So, uh, you know, not being able to get the job done, which is ironic as we say this because Derek still has yet to win the big one. Is this his moment? Does he win the big one? Or does Josh Bishop continue to prove that, man, he's the man. He's still... Right now, Joshua Bishop is the bar when it comes to AIW, right? Like, he's the measuring stick. This is this is the man. He is the intense icon for a reason. This is this is his yard. Uh, see, now, I, I, I'm going to – this is this is very risky here, what I'm going to say, because I value my health very well. Uh-huh. And I have been – I have stuck my oh. fist out for a fist bump before, and I know how hard that man hits. But when yeah. you say that that Josh is the top and he's the pillar and he's this and that, I kind of think I think him and Derek are I think they're the pillars together because Josh he, Josh one A one B hasn't and this is where I say I value my health and I'm only stating things that have happened in the truth. I am not giving any opinion or blah blah blah. But Josh <laughs> has lost a few times now to Matt and and, and you know mm-hmm. and. I think not that Derek didn't win, but like, you know, I just, I think they're, I think they're right there. Maybe, maybe Josh slid down a little bit in the losses and then, and, and maybe Cardona got in his head a little bit and in some of those losses and that, you know, um, I think Derek maybe gained, gained a little ground and he could be right there with him together. Like you said, one, a one B I I don't, I won't necessarily, maybe I won't, I just won't necessarily say that Josh stands there above everyone, especially Derek and looks down upon him because of the things that have happened with the belts and yada. And like I said, love, love Josh. It's my guy, the intense icon. I try to be as fair and middle ground as everything, but that's my point too. You got to give it to Derek in the fact that he's been right there. He's been in all these matches. He's been in the finals. He's been, he's been right there. He hasn't been able to cash it in and you got to think, that's in the back of his mind. And eventually, you know, you, you push a man long enough and you, you know, eventually they're going to come and they're going to cash in and these, they, they're going to do what they have to do to get that victory. And, and Josh, Josh, like, like I said, another thing of you can't look past anyone because Derek could just as easily raise both of those belts as Josh could. And that's why I think this, this, for a, a a match for both belts, we are going to see fucking absolute fucking chaos. This That match is going to be... <laughs> I'm scared for my health. <laughs> you know, as as you look 
at AIW over the last year, and, and even the last couple of years, again, not having had an absolution in some time, when you, when you think about building a main event, obviously Josh won Gauntlet for the Gold. It was supposed to be Joshua Bishop versus Matt Cardona, and you know what a match, of course, that would have been because that's just been brewing. It's just been a, a great rivalry that has you know helped AIW keep going over the last year plus. But take Matt Cardona out of it, and if you look at two homegrown AIW guys that you're like, who deserves? If you get an absolution for the first time in three years, who deserves to be in this? Who are the guys that have had the company on their back? Oh, yeah. And it's... It's got to be Derek and the pillars, and dude. That's Bishop. what I'm saying. And and you got to think about right. too. Yeah. Honestly, I know people love Cardona, and he puts asses in the seats. There's a lot that goes into it. That fucking mother, he that asshole would have treat cheated or something. He'd have low blowed. His fucking wife would have came out. We would have saw some bullshit. This is Absolution 15. I want to see two guys beat the absolute shit out of each other, and the best one wins and holds those belts. And that's what Derek and Josh are gonna do. And I think the match that they're gonna give us is gonna be. I, I like Mr. Cardona. It's a nice guy. But like I said, he probably would have did some dumb shit. Derek and Josh are going to beat the shit out of each other, and we're going to find the winner that way. Well, if you think that Derek is not above I don't necessarily. Don't forget Ziggy will probably be rolling around somewhere here on the outside, and Derek likes to use her as a weapon. I don't necessarily think that he's above doing whatever he has to win. I just know that those two are going to go. They're going to go after it, and it, it is – yeah, they're gonna yeah. Go I mean, all it's out gonna here. be yeah. It's it's gonna be a different match than it would be that Josh and Matt Cardona would have. I think for the better. Oh yeah, opinion. I could. I would. I hate, like that. I said, I don't want you know want to talk down on Cardona or anything like that. You know, Matt's a great guy. I think Josh and Derek are gonna blow the roof off Ted Morshine. This is this is you know the match. It's it's all been building for three years, and. Um, you know, the pressure is kind of on right. both of them, right? Here it is. This is the moment. This is the moment. Who is the man at AIW? That's what this is. This isn't just about the titles. This is about the title of being, you know, top top person, top player on the roster. And and not just because you're holding the titles, but, I mean, for, for just for bragging rights even, it feels like that's what this comes down to, proving that you are yeah. the top. You, that you are you are the absolute best that this company has to offer and these are two guys who have been trying to do it for the last several years and now here we go Derek it took him a long time to get out of the shadows of this big group that was the production and he's been doing it and doing it and making noise and Josh has you know all these he's, he's got the big highlights and big match moments but man, Derek has him it just what a story! What a what an interesting. I can't wait. Yeah, all of this is going to be because again, can Derek? That's to me. That's the that's one of the side stories, right? Can Derek Dillinger yeah. finally win the big one? Yeah, and and to think about AIW just kind of in general and the hands that it's in with those two being the pillars of this and like what we're even we're gonna get going forward because you know what I mean. <laughs> no, neither one of them are just gonna lose either. I mean, like ah, well, I try. You know what I mean, like that. This is going to be an interesting, uh, right. you know. AW's got some, we got some good times ahead. Like I said, with the tag division, the women's division coming back, the 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 heavyweight division, we'll call it, man. I mean, because I mean, he got like we were saying back up with Broner. That guy's been making a lot of noise. When is that? You know, that guy's going to start peeking his head into the tag or the to the title picture and stuff too. And wait, wait till you start seeing some of that shit. I mean, AW, AW's going to be wild in the coming years, Steve. I can't wait. I'm so glad to work for the company. <laughs> I mean, you know, you can go up and down this roster, and doesn't it still feel like this roster is so incredibly underrated as you look at independent Well, because wrestling? everybody, it's just me and Thorne talked about it. Everyone is everywhere. You see a lot, the main AIW guys are on a lot of these other indie shows around around the country. Hell, Joss is wrestling in like the fucking Cayman Islands or something in next month or some shit or in like Jamaica or some shit. She's like wrestling somewhere yeah. crazy like that. So the AW students and graduates are everywhere. They are, yeah. It, but it just, man, it still feels like, you know, 
I, I don't know. It's just the pride of me being a part of the company uh, as I have been for so many years now. And it's just like, man, people are still sleeping on this. And you look at this show and and the matches that are going to come from it. And if you're sleeping on AIW, you uh, this show alone, you're going to miss, I think, multiple match of the year candidates. This is- if you if you're not paying attention, this to is like AIW a show is. too. If like you've never came out to an AIW show and you're like been on the fence, like man, I was like want to check that out. This is one to go to, man, because you're just about to see you know a few hours of just back to back to back to back fucking incredible matches, and uh, it'll give you a great look at what you're what you're going to see for a few years coming up in AIW and what the what the promotion looks like. Yeah, and it, it, it all comes down to this. Such a big night and uh, big moments likely to happen for so many different people this Saturday. you got to get there. Shop.aiwrestling.com. Pick up your tickets. There is plenty of general admission. I shouldn't say plenty of general admission. There is general admission seats remaining. I don't know that there's plenty, to be honest with you. Uh, but I'm sure that if we have to add more, we will add more if we're able to. Uh, so shop.aiwrestling.com. Don't miss out on your opportunity. I know that tickets are going quickly. All the premium seating has been sold out for some time now. Um, I believe that we will be streaming live, but I don't know that for sure. I uh, didn't get to ask John that before we hopped on here. So this is it, folks. It's three years in you know, the so making. So like the streaming is cool, this. and that's cool if you can't be there because you like got something going on. But if you're just on the fence, man, I mean, it is streaming is nothing like being in the fucking building. I mean, and 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 you know, just the the feel of the crowd being there. You know, it's just gonna be it's just gonna be such an electric kind of feeling. I want to I want to hear I want to hear a fucking uh, a Chandler Biggins chant before we even get this fucking thing started from the fans. That's my challenge to all you motherfuckers. There you go. If I don't hear that shit on the other side of the stage after the before the first match or so, I'm gonna be pretty pissed. <laughs> <laughs> there, there it is, folks. Uh, again, looking forward to it uh, so much, and uh, it's exciting. Looking forward to you getting to take part. Uh, your first absolution as part of the team. This is it's gonna be one hell of a weekend. I can't that's wait. For sure. um, it's it's one I've wanted to be a part of. I've been looking forward to. Uh, you know, Hell on Earth was a big one, or not Hell on Earth, excuse me, uh, Gauntlet for the gold was a big one. I had a lot of, you know, a lot of things to do in that, but I was, I was like very curious how that works and yada yada. Now I'm very excited to be a part of the tradition that is uh, Absolution, just be a part of all that. Final thoughts. Yeah, you know, I was spe- speaking of Biggins, and uh, you know how I knew I was like really like I made it in AIW and like I've been accepted. Uh, Patty asked me to take a picture with her. Chandler's mom was like, "Hey, let's take a picture." And because you always, you, you know, go. Patty's the best. Uh, shout shout out to Patty. She always takes pics with everybody. She's, She's a great lady. Uh, when she was like, "Hey, can we take a picture real quick?" I was like, "Fuck you, bet your ass we can." I've been waiting for this. <laughs> She she is absolutely yeah. the greatest, uh, you know, top tier human right there. Uh, so, folks, we do it this Saturday. We do it for Cleveland. We do it for Northeast Ohio. We do it for you, the fans. We do That's it right. for Chandler Biggins. It all comes down to Absolution 15, your very first Absolution in three years. The build to this has been unbelievable. It's been dramatic. It has been absolutely intense so get your tickets one more time shop.aiwrestling.com don't if you're on the fence like you said get there don't sit at home and stream this if you can make it to the show get to the show it's going to be an incredible atmosphere and uh, a big thanks again to royal docks brewing and their backyard crusher we'll have it available for you at absolution to purchase and uh try the official beer of aiw which is pretty exciting and other than that, folks, we will see you this Saturday. And, uh, you know, if we don't see you there this Saturday, which, again, why not? Uh, we'll talk to you next time here on AIW's The Card is Going to Change. <laughs>